and then you guys are triple a and yes. you know triple a why don't you explain triple a double a single a the differences because i get asked that question a lot i want to hear how you explain it and then i have a follow-up on that sure uh so i think triple a is in a lot of ways i think it's become schools that self-select into that league that really value um basketball as a program at their school so it might be hey we want to we want to invest and be able to compete at the highest possible level uh, and every school is different and what they can do and, and what their end goal is uh, so i think yeah you know in, in my mind it was the triple a is is you know a self-selected group that want to compete with the best in new england um, and then you know Breaking down from there, it's, it's a variety of schools and, and where they feel the best level of competition for their school and where their program is at uh, lies. Uh, so I think it's really, you know, it's a, it's a school to school decision um, based on how strong your team is and where the best level of competition for you is at that time. And I think at New Hampton, we were really fortunate. We were able to build some really strong teams. Um, and a lot of that was work that was there before I got there. Um, and so I, I think that culture existed to be able to attract top tier athletes. Um, and so every school is a little bit different, you know, and, and there's variance year to year on how strong the team is and, and those kind of things. But I think it's, yeah, where your footprint is and then where you feel most comfortable competing as a school and what's best for the institution. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this one too, because parents are always like, I don't want to play single A, I want to play triple A, but <laughs> You being a former D1 assistant, let me ask you this. If I've got the same player and he's at a middle tier single A school or a middle tier double A or a middle tier triple A, he's the same player. We're talking clones here. Will a college coach look at him differently based on what class he's in or what team he's on? I, you know, I don't think so. Um, my experience has been, um, you know, I think if you're good enough, they're going to find you as long as you're putting yourself in a position where you have people that are advocating for you and, and working for you. Um, but I, I've always been a believer that you need to be on the court. And so here at Asheville, we try to play 10 guys as much as we possibly can, because our goal is to put them in a position that when they graduate, you know, they're able to go into college and, and play and understand how to read a scouting report and understand how to play a high level offense. And so for me, it's always been you know, if you're coming here, we want to try to put you in those positions. And obviously you earn that. It's a <laughs> meritocracy, not a democracy, obviously. But uh, I think for me, that's important. And you know, there's different, there's different scales to this. We had a player at New Hampton, which I think was the exception, but he tore his ACL in a layup line and pickup and then ended up enrolled and, you know, earned a scholarship spot at Quinnipiac in the spring um, based on access to some coaches and things like that. So I, I really think, again, it's a, it's a, player by player decision. I'm always a big believer in where you can play and a coach able to see what you can do on the court. And, um, and I think, you know, a, a good coaches are able to evaluate and, and figure out what they need and who the player is uh, pretty quickly in a lot of instances.